everyone. Tim Brown, welcome back to my Apple Podcast, the podcast that makes personal connection to everything Apple. Today I want to feature Matter. Matter is an application for iOS, that is for the iPhone and the iPad, that enables you to create 3D animations, videos, as well as still photos from some amazing organic and geometric designs. It's pretty remarkable. I'm featuring it today because the developers just came out with a new update that enables you to add really cool audio effects. Really awesome. So let's take a look at Matter. At the interface of Matter, and when you first open it, you have the option to access pictures from your own camera roll, or you can take a picture with the native camera, or just go to the PicSight library to choose some of their images. They have an images to start out with, which is their weekly photo, which you can use to post to their Instagram contest, or go through the numerous other categories that they have available, and subcategories. I'm going to just go ahead and start with perspective, because there's some pretty cool options here. And I'm gonna choose this interior of a sort of bus or train here. I'm gonna click download. And it's gonna give me the default size of that picture. If I wanna just go with that, I can choose none. Or I can choose some of the other aspect ratios. In this case, I'm gonna choose one one, which is square, because I think I wanna post this to Instagram. So I'm gonna choose one one, that's gonna restructure it. But hey, that looks good to me. Hit the check mark in the bottom right to go to the next stage. Okay, so once you arrive to the next stage, right away you're gonna see an element appear on top of your photo. Now, one thing that's unique about Matter, it's very similar to another application that PicSight makes calls, called Fragment, where it basically just juxtaposes all of these very architectonic sort of shapes and forms on top of your existing image. One thing that Matter does that is really cool is that it enables you to create 3D effects in the form of photos and or videos. And that's what I really like about Matter the most. And I have so much fun using it. I mean, I, I, sometimes I can't stop using it. It's just amazing how much fun you can have because there's so many options, as you will see here in a moment. So here I have an element that's been added by default. If I just use one finger on my iPad, I can rotate it around like so. If I use two fingers on the iPad, I can then move that around and then pinch and zoom to resize it. Pretty awesome. What's also that's really nice about this is you can change the different effects too. But what I'm going to do is, before I do that, I'm going to show you all the different options. This is just one set of objects or elements that you can use. I'm going to show you the other menu in a, mo in a moment. But here I'm going to scroll through and just show you all the options that come with this particular menu. And all of them rotate, by the way. So really cool options. Again, very architectonic and organic and fluid and metallic. Um, really creating these very you know futuristic kind of effects, I guess you can say. So that's one option. Now when I check on this menu option here, right above that, you see here you have a, an option to have access to all these other different groups of objects. If you're just starting out, you may only have an option to select a few. With some in-app purchases, you can purchase some more. And as you can see, the more you purchase, the more options you have, including like this option that I really like, which is twisted geometry. It's pretty awesome. And just to give you an idea of how wide-ranging that is, just show you the, the range of twisted geometry options here. I actually love this one. So I'm going to go with this for a while. Now, once you have selected an element out of the, the pool of portfolios that are available, you can then begin to adjust it. So if I choose the next option, I can now choose how I want this to appear. So this first option here is called Reflect. And Reflect is pretty cool, as you can see. Rotating it around, pinching and zooming, trying to figure out how I want it to look. But then if I go through the menu of options, you can see it begins to change how it interfaces with the background. So, for example, I can continue to scroll through. And you'll see that the shape takes on different appearances. You know, in many different ways, it begins to pick up the, the light and shadow and color from the background image. So what you're just looking here is at the range of options that you have to create the kind of effect that you want. Okay, that's one option. Now you also have the option to 
to adjust the colors as well. So you can see right above it, I have two options here. There's a picture icon and there is a color wheel icon, I, uh, option. I'm gonna choose the color wheel option first. And as you can see here, I can go through and select colors that will then, can then be added to my element. So it actually now has this nice blue tint, which is really cool. I actually really like this. I'm gonna go with it. Um, but you can also do other things. Like for example, say if you have a really cool photo in your library that you want to add into your element, it will inform or influence how that element looks in relationship to the background. So for example, if I go in and choose the picture icon, all of a sudden my library opens. And if I choose this one color from this one photo, you see it's now added to that element. I'll choose another one that you can notice. I'm going to remove that and find another one that I think will more influence it, mainly on a level of color. I'm going to choose this photo here with the color. And see that? The color was now added to my element and gives it a really cool effect. Love it. And again, I love the 3D aspect of this. It's just it, what makes matter so unique. Okay, so that's that option. Now you notice too that the elements come with shadows. So you can go to the next menu on the bottom and you can control how you want that shadow to look. So for example, this first option here called the shadow floor, I can, you see here I can vary how much of that shadow I want to see in terms of the perspective and so forth. Or I can go to the next option which is shadow opacity and I can control how strong I want that shadow to appear. And then the last option is I can choose shadow blur in case I want that shadow to have more of a blur or to have more sharpness. So it's nice being able to have all three of those options. Now one thing you're gonna notice about the shadow option though, that the more, the closer the, the object is to the bottom of your picture, the more chances that it's gonna be cropped when the shadow option is selected. So for example, I'm gonna go back to my first menu here and I'm going to bring my object down to the floor and you see it starts to sink into the floor. The shadow is what's causing that to happen. Uh, if you prefer to see the entire object, you have the option to just get rid of the shadow. So if I go back to the shadow option and just select the on button to off. Then if you go back to the object, you see that you can see the three dimensional object no matter where you put it on the floor. So that's cool. I'm actually going to leave the shadow off for now because I want to see the entire image. The next thing I want to show you is some of the export options. Okay, so let's go ahead and export what we have here. So I'm going to go to the top right corner and select the triangle here. And I'm going to select video because I want to see what this actually looks like as a video with these animations occurring against the background. Now that I have this really cool visual image going. So I'm going to go ahead and select video and it's going to give me an idea of how this is going to look if it's moving through space. And as you can see here, I have some options selected. I have the Y option or the Z option selected for rotation, but I can choose X or Y or all three, which I think I'm going to do because I like that. Now along the bottom, you can control the speed. You can make it go slow, medium, or fast. And again, while this is being previewed, you can still take your finger and go up and down to control the scale of it in terms of how you want it to appear, appear in space. So that's pretty cool. I'm really liking how this has turned out so far. Uh, there are more options though. You can make this pulse. Yeah, pretty cool. Or you can make it hover. And right now I have it, have both selected, but if I deselect the pulse option, I'm just gonna let it hover. And I kind of like that too. But I'm going to deselect both of them for now because I want to show you the new feature that just came out that PicSight released for Matter, the ability to add music. Now what's really nice is that the music informs how the shape appears as it's moving through space. So I'm going to go ahead and add music and then I'm going to just randomly choose here a sample and you can see right now that that song or sample is influencing the form that this element takes and I can just take two fingers and just adjust the scale of it in terms of how I want it to appear because the music is transforming the, the, the look and feel of it. I'm really loving this though. I think this is fantastic. I'm gonna go with it. Just go ahead and check mark along the bottom. Pretty cool. What's also nice too is you don't have to choose the option where the music informs it, although I like that. 
you can just deselect re or select react to deselect that. And I'll just continue to move the way you had originally set it up. However, if you like react, just select it again and it will begin to inform how it moves across the screen. And I like that, that feature a lot. I just think the fact that the developers had elected to build that in is just an added treat. So why not take advantage of it, right? Um, yeah, awesome. So that's what it would look like if I wanted to go ahead and make a video. Uh, I'm gonna actually go ahead and do that because I think I'm gonna use it later. So as you can see here, it's processing the video. It doesn't take very long. And as soon as that's done, it will send it right to your photo library on your iPad. And from there, of course, you can post it online, Facebook, Instagram, wherever you want. Or just keep it in your library for later. Click done. You can go back to editing it. I'm going to select the X to get out of the video mode because I want to show you some export options too. So I hit the, the uh, triangle once again in the top right corner and then the select export. You see here that I can save it or I can add an object or I can share it, import it into Instagram, send to another app. So if you wanted to send it to another app, it will be in a photo format and then you can go ahead and edit it that way. Or you can just choose one of PicSite's other apps. Uh, they have great ones, Uni Union, Fragment, Lori Stripes and so forth that can add extra elements to what you're doing. I just say for example that I went, wanted to add another object. What's going to happen is that that 3D object that I added is going to become two-dimensional and enable me then to add a three-dimensional object on top of that image. So I'm now going to have two two-dimensional images while adding an additional 3D image. So let's go ahead and choose the add object option. And you can see here that that object underneath has been duplicated. Basically, the object underneath has become one with the foundation image. And so if you want to add it some, some depth, you can now go ahead and play this object on top of the existing one. What is nice too is that now I have the option to add some, some, some variability or some uh, variety to how this looks. So I can get rid of the color scheme that I have now, for example, and go back and add something else. To maybe add it, make it more brighter. And now I'm going to go ahead to the top right corner again, select video once again and play it back. So now I have this other element playing on top of the existing one that has now become static. So that's a nice option to have when you add on additional layers. You can keep just doing this over and over again until you get the desired effect that you want. It's pretty cool. Of course, you always have the option to save it as a photo too. So when I go back to export again, and if I click just save, it'll save it as a photo rather than a video. Either way, you have some really nice options with Matter. It's so much fun and exciting and, and easy to use. I mean, you're gonna really enjoy it. Um, this has been my favorite app for a long time, but with the new added music feature, um, I'm hooked. I'm, I'm going to be posting things on Instagram almost every day, probably. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little review of Matter. I think it's a fantastic app. Check out all the apps by PicSite. Of course, they're on Instagram. And see what you think. I think you're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, my name is Tim Brown. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of My Apple Podcast. Check me out next time.